नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणि भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनि अंबत्वासंदी भगवदगीते भगवदेशिणि ओ भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुना विच वॉज इंक्लूडेड इन द महाभारत बाय द एंशंट सेज व्यासा O shower of the nectar like knowledge of advaita non dualism O goddess through your 18 chapters O my affectionate mother the destroyer of rebirth I meditate upon thee Now Krishna vandana Vasudeva sutam devam kansa chanura martanam devakim paramanandam krishnam vande jagat guru o lord the son of vasudeva slayer of kansa and chanur extreme delight for mother devaki o krishna the supreme teacher of the universe i bow down to you today shri krishna is going to answer Arjuna's query, Arjuna's doubt. In the fifty-fourth shloka, Arjuna has asked, "Tita pratnasya ka baasha? What is the description? How a person who is with with a steady wisdom, with a steady intellect, and the tendency to get into ecstasy, samadhista, and also stita dhi, a firm resolve, a resolution." A man with firm resolution. How? How does? What is the description of such a person, O Krishna? How? How does he behave? How does he? How does he sit? How does he walk? How does uh, uh, he? He? He speak? Hmm? Kim prabhashet? Kim asit? Kim vrajet? How does such a person talk? How does he speak? How does he sit? How does he walk? what are what are what are the signs what are the symptoms to know such a person who is a sthita pratnya and now the lord answers shri bhagwan vacha the lord answers shri bhagwan said shri krishna said prajahati yada kaman sarvan parthamano gatan atmanyevatmana tushtah स्थित प्रज्ञ तदोच्युते तदोच्यते तत् उच्यते दैट मैन इज कॉल्ड ए स्थित प्रज्ञ स्थित प्रज्ञ तत् उच्यते देन ही इज कॉल्ड ए स्थित प्रज्ञ वेन नाउ श्री कृष्ण इज एक्सप्लेनिंग इन ऑल दीज नेक्स्ट वर्सेस in all the next 18 uh, shlokas that we are going to read from 55 onwards shri krishna is elaborating the nature the qualities the pattern of behavior the attitudes of such a person sthita pragnya samadhist sthitadhi one who is firm in his resolution resolve one who is with a steady wisdom so प्रजहाति यदा कामान प्रजहाति इज कास्ट ऑफ डिस्कार्ड्स डिस्कार्ड्स व्हाट यदा व्हेन ही डिस्कार्ड्स डिस्कार्ड्स व्हाट कामान डिजायर ऑल द डिजायर्स व्हेन इट डिस्कार्ड्स ऑल द डिजायर्स सर्वान कामान व्हेन अ पर्सन discards renounces gives up all the desires then o partha o arjuna manogatan of the mind desires of the mind when a person gives away 
ऑल द डिजायर्स ऑफ द माइंड वो पार्थ आत्मनी वात्मना तुष्ट आत्मनी इन द सेल्फ एव आत्मना बाय द सेल्फ आत्मनी इज इन द सेल्फ एव आत्मना इवन बाय द सेल्फ तुष्ट इज सैटिस्फाइड स्थित प्रज्ञ तदा उच्चते देन ही इज कॉल्ड एज ए स्थित प्रज्ञ हैविंग रिनाउंसड हैविंग गिवन अप हैविंग कास्ट अवे ऑल द डिजायर्स ऑफ द माइंड वेन ए पर्सन गेट्स एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन द सेल्फ कैपिटल एस वेन द पर्सन गेट्स एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन द सेल्फ एंड बाय द सेल्फ देन तदा स्थित प्रज्ञ उच्चते देन दैट पर्सन इज कॉल्ड एज स्थित प्रज्ञ ऑफ स्टेडी विजडम ऑफ ए फर्म माइंड द ब्लेसेड लॉर्ड सेड श्री भगवान वाच वेन ए मैन एबेंडन्स ओ पार्थ ऑल द डिजायर्स ऑफ द हार्ट ऑल द डिजायर्स ऑफ द माइंड मनोगतान मनो मनोगतान सर्वान कामान ऑल द डिजायर्स ऑफ द माइंड ऑफ द हार्ट एंड इज सैटिस्फाइड तुष्ट एंड इज सैटिस्फाइड बाय डूइंग व्हाट सैटिस्फाइड इन द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ बाय मर्जिंग इन द सेल्फ बाय मर्जिंग दिस सेल्फ इन द सेल्फ तदा स्थित प्रज्ञ उच्चते देन दैट पर्सन इज कॉल्ड एज स्थित प्रज्ञ द मैन विद स्टेडी विजडम द पर्सन विद स्टेडी विजडम नाउ दिस इन दिस श्लोक श्री कृष्णा हैज एड्रेस द अर्जुन हैड रेस्ड टू क्वेरीज इन फैक्ट ही हैड रेस्ड टू क्वेरीज इन द श्लोक फिफ्टी फोर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्थित प्रज्ञ से का भाषा समाधिस्थ से केशव हो केशवा हो कृष्णा व्हाट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन हाउ डू यू डिफाइन ए पर्सन हु इज स्थित प्रज्ञ एंड देन इन द सेकंड लाइन ऑफ दैट वर्ड्स ही हैड आस्क्ड अनदर क्वेश्चन दैट हाउ डज ही स्पीक हाउ डज ही सेट हाउ डज ही वॉक ऑल द फिजिकल एट्रीब्यूट्स ऑफ दैट पर्सन सो कृष्णा इज एड्रेसिंग the first part of this question that was raised by arjuna that having abandoned all the desires of the mind of the heart then a person remains satisfied in the self by the self there is no duality then you are merged in the self taking the help of yourself so Uh, the 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 commentary on this shloka by Swami Chidvananda Ji. Fire is hot; it need not go anywhere in search of warmth. Naturally, the fire, the 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 the, 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 the heat, heat is the inherent nature of the fire. The burning power in the fire. is by its own the fire need not go looking around where is heat where is heat there within within the fire itself is that heat even so the atman is bliss we under the ignorance of delusion we go looking for happiness the joy the the, the pleasures outside but the real happiness the real joy the real pleasure is within us the one who is dwelling within this hmm, physical body all the bliss happiness joy is there within and we go on looking for everywhere outside it imp- it imposes the bliss within on Uh, bliss within on objects outside and goes in search of those objects believing with their acquisition happiness can be gained now what happens this mahamaya has project 
created a projection of the Brahman in the form of Prakriti. Even so, whatever gleams is there inside our ever-dwelling Atman, which is imperishable, which is indestructible, which is indivisible, it is nothing but Satchidananda. The bliss is verily its nature. Now this Atman, it projects its bliss, its happiness, its joy on the external projections. And we feel, oh, if I eat that sweet, if I eat that Roshagulla, I will feel very happy. If I eat that uh, fish curry, if I eat that uh, snacks, I will feel happy. We are, the Atman is creating that happiness, projecting that happiness in the projected, projected things. And we start looking around everywhere outside. But the real happiness is here. This search outside for happiness is called karma, desire. From where will I get that good taste? Mm. From where will I uh, satisfy the hunger of my senses? That is what creates desires in our mind and leads away, takes us away from the one which is closest to us. Takes us away looking at things external. The grabbing modification of mind is karma. Once this desire sets in to enjoy the pleasures in the external things, the desire, it starts modifying the basic intonations of our mind. The waves and ripples on the surface of water obscure the sight of sand bed below. Till the time there are waves on the surface of the water, we can't clearly see. The water may be clean. But the waves which are there on the surface of the water, they prevent us from seeing that beautiful, that pure sand bed which is lying at the bottom. It is only when the water is still. It is only when there are no more waves. It is only when there are no more desires that we start looking at the purity of the Atman. We become aware of the purity of the Atman and then we say, Oh wow! That's it. There is nothing further to say. The Atman is satisfied by the Atman. The ripples of karma in the mind obstruct the vision of Atman. All the same, the changeless bliss within reveals itself as happiness coming from sense objects outside why 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 do you feel we why do we feel happy once we satisfy our sense objects desire desires for the sense objects why do you why do we feel happy that happiness is already within it is only through that external projection external manifestation we are again trying to gain that happiness but that is an artificial happiness, not the happiness within. And that's why that external happiness is always associated with unhappiness. The external joy always comes with sorrow. The external joy, the, 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 the pleasure always comes with the pain. When the mind is specified by relinqu relinquishing all the karmas, all the desires, the blissful Atman is realized in its own glory. So the desires which get generated in the mind with the influence of maya, with the influence of delusion, they take us this pure unblemished bliss from us. They take it away from us. And we keep on getting entangled in that cycle of birth and death, of birth and death, of birth and death. Because we always try to 
taste this thing, next that thing, then that thing. We, we want to experience all these pleasures and pains. And till the time the desires are there in the mind, in the heart, we keep on getting trapped in this cycle of birth and death, thereby enjoying joys and play, uh, sorrows, uh, experiencing the joys and sorrows, experiencing the pleasures and pains, experiencing the happiness and unhappiness. He is a Brahma Jnani who intuits that the happiness he sought for in the world outside is in its entirety in himself. In all the happiness that we look around, all the pleasures that we look around, they are already there inside with a difference that there is, there is no opposite pairing pattern attached to it. The, the bliss here is unconditional bliss. The happiness here inside has no unhappiness attached to it. Because it has become one. The pairs of opposites have all merged into one. There is no more pain. There is no more sorrow. There is no more unhappiness. There is no more pain. He remains self-satisfied. Satisfied in the self. Atmani Tushtaha. He remains satisfied in the self, by the self. The aspirant who seeks to wipe out all desires and to pacify the mind is the one who practices yoga and is the one who will get into that state of ecstasy, of samadhi, of sthitadhi. Now, uh, Sri Ramakrishna's teaching which uh, uh, you know uh, connotes with this teaching of Sri Krishna he who is dead as it were when alive. That is to say, as desireless as a corpse becomes competent from Brahma Jnana. This is the simplest solution. This is the simplest description of a person who attains Brahma Jnana, who becomes Thita Pratnya. That, like a corpse, once, once the, the, the prana gets out of this body, there is no desire for the body then. The dead body doesn't feel like eating a roshagulla or, uh, you know, uh, uh, enjoying any other pleasures. There is nothing in there. The one which projects this happiness in the external entities is left. It has gone. Now, there is no more desire in the body. While living when we can become like this, that is what Sri Ramakrishna says. While living when we can give up these petty desires, the worldly desires, then we get into the state of becoming, we, then we become eligible to get that knowledge of Brahmatnya. And in this context, I am also reminded of our Ma's words, the Holy Mother, Sri Sarda Devi. She used to say, she used to tell her disciples that desire is the root of all suffering. So if you want liberation, become desireless. Get rid of all these petty desires. Desire only for the Lord. Desire only for the Mother. Desire only for that absolute please. And then only you will get into the state of being a sthita pradnya. That state is reflected in the sthita pradnya, the one who is desireless. So that was uh, Sri Krishna's, uh, uh, you know, uh, answer to the first part of uh, first line of the fifty-fourth shloka, the question that Arjuna had asked him. And that is our reading for the day. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Ma Jai Swamiji